Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Anmol. I'm a dermatologist based in India. And in today's video and a few upcoming videos, I will be answering almost all of your questions related to publications during dermatology residency. What are the types of publications? Why is it important to have publications? How many publications must one aim to have by the end of residency? How and where to begin? What are some simple ways and practices through which you can potentially increase the quantity and the quality of your publications? These are a couple of questions that I will be addressing in today's video. So this will be like a basic introduction and orientation to publications during dermatology residency. But you're definitely going to want to subscribe because in the subsequent videos, I will be talking about how to write a case report step by step and also the entire process of submitting it to a good journal for publication. So let's get started. So what is meant by publications? So academic publications are basically your research work or your academic work written in the form of an article that gets published into an academic journal. What are the types of publications? Now, if you were to go to the website of any good academic journal uh, and you were to go to the section called instructions for authors on that website, you will find there a list of the various types of publications that they accept for publishing. For example, review article, original article, case reports, brief reports, case series, correspondence. So these are a few examples. Uh, there are many more different types of articles that various journals accept for publication. It mainly varies from journal to journal. So it's best that you explore the instructions for authors page of various journals to understand the different types of articles that you can submit for publishing. You can also read more about what exactly uh, each of these different types of manuscripts means by going to uh, the website of any academic journal like iDodge, iJD or iJDVL. So go to the instructions for authors section and there you'll find the different types of manuscripts that they accept for publication and their details. Now you might wonder, is it really important to publish? Like why go through all the trouble? There are many reasons why you must start publishing your academic work right from residency onwards. Firstly, publications add credit to your CV, so they ultimately help in building a good quality CV. Both the quality of publications as well as the number of publications on your CV, both the things matter. Building a good CV is beneficial for obvious reasons, um, be it you know getting a job, getting a post, or uh, applying when you're applying for various national and international scholarships. For all of these, the merit of the candidates is usually compared on the basis of their CV. Secondly, writing an academic paper by yourself is a very interesting and a very nice way to get a complete and a thorough knowledge about any particular topic because it requires you to review all of the current literature, right? Also, through your paper, you are contributing to the literature and the knowledge of many others as well. Uh, some universities also have certain criteria for students that are to be fulfilled. For example, I believe NUHS has this criteria where they require the candidate to have at least two publications by the end of residency in order to appear for the MD exams. So it's obviously good to have publications to your credit, no doubt about that. But always remember, the quality of your publications is as important as the quantity. Make sure you don't just publish to increase the number of publications on your CV. So before you start working on any academic paper, be it a simple case report or a, a research study for an original article, make sure that you always review the current literature properly. You always do your due diligence and study very well what is already known about the topic so that you don't end up doing similar work that has already been published multiple times before. So in order for your paper or your research article uh, to be good quality and for ultimately uh, for it to be accepted by a good quality journal, you need to make sure that your work is in some way unique and is contributing to the already existing gaps in the current literature uh, related to that topic. So always before you start working on a study or a case report for that matter, ask your seniors, take the opinion of your seniors and also study the current literature about that particular topic to understand that in what way are you going to contribute to the already existing literature. So I hope you guys understand what I mean by quality of publication. Number one, 
unique, novel, or adding to the pre existing literature in some way. The second criteria for a quality publication would be one that is published in a good indexed journal with a good impact factor and preferably not a paid journal. So, always remember quality is as important as quantity. In the long run, it wouldn't really help even if you had multiple publications if they were all in paid journals. Also, another thing you must know is that all the types of publications do not have the same kind of impact on your CV. The maximum weightage is of original articles, which are basically research studies, followed by case series, followed by case reports. So publishing only case reports is also not ideal. It's also nice if you have like original articles or case series in your publication list. Having said that, however, case reports are actually the best way to start publishing as a resident. They are a simple way to begin and to simply get the hang of the entire process before you move on to writing and publishing more complicated articles like original articles or review articles. So in residency, start with publishing case reports and case series. A case report is basically you reporting something unique that you came across in your patient. So it could be either a rare, unique, less commonly reported disease or a unique or an unusual clinical presentation of a disease or a unique dermoscopic finding or a histopathologic finding that you came across or a unique treatment that you tried. You get the idea, right? I will also guide you on how exactly to write a case report in subsequent videos. So slowly start the process and make an aim that by the end of residency, you have at least two to four publications to your credit doable right now i have the best segment which is a couple of tips for you in order to publish more during residency how would you know if a case is to be reported how would you know if a case is unique or interesting so as a newly joined resident uh, i agree that it is uh, slightly difficult it is usually something that comes with a little more experience but there are definitely certain practices that you can follow during your residency that will increase your chances of coming across these unusual or interesting cases. So how can you as a resident increase your chances of coming across a unique or an interesting case or finding? Number one, knowledge of the current literature. The more you read, the more knowledge you have about what is already known about a particular disease or a topic. Only once you know enough about what is already known, will you be able to spot the anomalies or the unusual findings, right? So try to read more uh, right from the first year of your residency, be it from the textbooks or from the articles. Number two, showing cases to seniors. Never avoid showing a case to someone who's more senior, more knowledgeable or more experienced than you. They will be able to observe things and spot things that you might not be able to and then they'll be able to guide you accordingly about the unusual or the interesting findings. They will be able to recognize it better when a case is unique in some way. Of course, if something is fairly obvious and simple, you need not need to discuss it. But all I'm saying is that never hesitate in asking questions or discussing cases with your seniors. Number three, key observation. Never be in a rush when you're seeing a patient. Obviously, we'll tend to miss so many findings if we see patients when we're in a rush. Pay attention to the details. Examine all there is to be examined. Don't just pay attention to what the patient is showing you. See the patient as a whole and develop the habit of seeing the subtle signs. For example, I once had a patient who came to me for something completely unrelated and I just happened to notice, uh, I happened to examine his nails and I observed this peculiar finding on his thumbnails. Then I showed the case to a senior of mine and uh, eventually ended up reporting it. So stay observing because you never know what you may find. Number four, regular dermoscopy in the OPD. Dermoscopy is still an evolving field in dermatology. So I feel there's a lot of scope for discovery there. So it's a great habit of regularly doing dermoscopy of all the patients that you see in the OPD. Later on, you can see the pictures that you've clicked and read about the findings. You might come across some new patterns or some interesting findings that you can report. Number five, asking seniors for cases to help with. So basically, you can always request your seniors to give you an opportunity to help out with uh, some interesting case that they may have or some uh, research study uh, that they may be working on. So that's another way to increase the number of your publications. Ask, uh, offer to help out to your seniors. Number six, never ever avoid seeing a patient. Every patient is also an opportunity, so never miss the chance to see a patient. If you make this basic principle a simple rule in your life, you will always succeed in your career. And number seven, make it a habit to follow up on your patients that you've seen as much as you can. 
it's very important for learning and trust me developing this habit will eventually help you in increasing the number of your publications as well so these are some simple tips to publish more during residency and are key uh, in not just getting good cases to publish but also for good learning as a clinician I hope this video gave you a brief orientation about publications in dermatology residency. If you have more questions related to this, please uh, leave me a comment and I'll be happy to answer your queries. You can also connect with me on Instagram or via email. If you like my content, you can show your support by liking the video, sharing it with your friends or subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.